Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Beyond the To-Do List. I am your host, Eric Fisher. This week, I'm talking with Cynthia Sanchez of Oh So Pinteresting. Yes, that's right. We're going to be talking about Pinterest? Pinterest as a productivity tool? What? Yeah, you heard me. In fact, what you'll hear by the end of this episode from Cynthia and myself is that Pinterest is less of a social network and more of a search and recommendation engine that has social features but can be used as a productivity tool. In fact, surprisingly enough, that's what got Cynthia hooked on Pinterest in the first place. How do you use Pinterest as a productivity tool and why? Listen to our conversation and you'll find out. Speaking of productivity tools, one of the best things you can do is to choose the right tool for your email newsletter needs. And for me, that's MailChimp. And you can find them at beyondthetodolist.com slash MailChimp. They can meet all your needs. It's simple. It's easy. There's quick, cool video tutorial walkthroughs of how to do everything. And honestly, it's just super easy and fun and... <laughs> From everything that I've ever seen and interacted with them on, it's just fun to use a great tool. Again, you can find them at beyondthetodolist.com slash MailChimp. MailChimp is there to meet all your email newsletter and email communication needs. Go check them out again at beyondthetodolist.com slash MailChimp. Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the To-Do List. I am your host, Eric Fisher. My guest this week is Cynthia Sanchez of Oh So Pinteresting. Yes, Pinterest and productivity. Welcome to the show, Cynthia. Hi, Eric. Thanks so much for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for being on the show. And I am going to make believers out of the listeners that Pinterest can be a productivity tool. You, You don't have to just get lost swiping through on your phone or scrolling on your desktop through tons of visual pins, but it can be done for useful things. And and I believe it because I know it can be done even though I'm not fully doing it. First off, let's do this. Tell me a little bit about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you You basically work with Pinterest like full time these days, right? Yeah, practically. Yeah, actually it is. <laughs> it is full time. That's what I do. It's all about it's Pinterest. It's literally what you do. It's literally what I do. I sit there and I pin. I have that there's a there's a little some e card that floats around Pinterest um and that says, "Well, if only would somebody pay me to pin, I would be the happiest person in the world or something like that." It's a little <laughs> yeah. joke or whatever. It's like, "Hey, I have that." Huh? <laughs> it's great. It is great. And, and really, um I've been doing that for a couple of years. Um I have four kids. I live in Charleston, South Carolina. I just moved here and absolutely love it. Awesome. I know you know what you're talking about. I think it's interesting uh, that somebody would even suggest productivity and Pinterest go together. You know what I mean? Does that surprise you? No, because that's the reason I started with Pinterest. That's how I got hooked, as I mentioned. Yeah. How did you get hooked? How did you get hooked? Yeah. Yeah. As you know, I mentioned I have four kids, you know, so they keep me busy. I was working full time as a radiation oncology nurse. And um, back when Pinterest first started, you had to join the join it by invite. Somebody had to invite you to it. And uh, funny of all people to do to send me an invite. It was my mom. My mom was inviting me to a social network. It's (laughs) like, Mom, I have too much. I don't I have too much to do. I don't have time for that. I'm too busy. I got a job. I got kids. I got a life. I you know, no. And she sent me like three or four invites and I just kind of ignored them. And then when Saturday afternoon after, you know, we had spoken or, you know, had dinner together or something, you know, she kind of mentioned again, it's like, okay, fine, I'll just I'll go check it out, see what all the fuss is about. And it took me five minutes and I was completely hooked. And I was hooked in that, yes, it is a lot of beautiful images that you can kind of get lost in and and just kind of focus in on. But it was all about the things that I was interested in. I could focus in on that. And I've been on the internet forever, pretty much since the internet was like a thing. Um, My husband and I are kind of geeky, nerdy people. So we jumped right on. And, you know, I've been online all these years and never really found anything that just kind of swept me in like Pinterest had. And the reason it did was because... 
to me, the internet was kind of getting boring, if you can imagine that, um, because I was using the same search engines over and over and over to search for the things I was interested or had questions about or, or needed to find information about. And I was getting the same results over and over and over again. But when I got into Pinterest, it's like, whoa, there's all this other stuff out there. There's all these other blogs, all these other you know news sites, all these other businesses, all these other things that can really help me find the solutions to my problems or um, help me to think of other things to do or, or ways to do things or more efficient ways or, or better ways to do things. And quickly, it really impacted our family. I was cooking differently. I was making healthier recipes. We were going out to eat less. So it was saving us money. Um, I, you know, I followed my mom on Pinterest because she had an account before I did. I found things that she liked and I was able to do her Christmas shopping a lot quicker because I knew she liked it. She pinned it. I bought it for her, you know. Um, so it was saving. It was really useful to me. So I think Pinterest is a great productivity tool. Well, and, and so that's the thing is, is it's, it, it is known as a social network, but it, it's not like the other networks, is it? It's no, very different. It's, yeah, it's not about finding about the personal things going on in your life or what your friends or coworkers or, or what they're up to, where they went to have dinner, you know, their latest, you know, picture of their most fabulous meal or whatever that you see on other social networks. It's, it's all about what you're interested in. And there is a little bit of a social component. I like to look at it more as a search tool with social media features. Um, so it is a tool. It's something that you can use to really help you. And I've used it to, you know, for travel. I've used it in, in so many different ways. And now that, you know, my business revolves around it, it it's, it's taken on a whole new meaning. Yeah. It, it's almost like a visual search engine that's curated by the people you choose to follow, which exactly. are friends or trusted influencers. or Yeah. Or just somebody friends. else. It could be just by anybody that has an interest in the same thing you do. Right. I mean, we, we may share a common interest in Doctor Who, but I do not care to follow your, you know, I don't know, mountain climbing board. I'd have no interest in mountain climbing, you know, but I like that we both have an interest in Doctor Who. We'll follow each other for information about that, or, but not the other thing. So we don't have to see absolutely everything, you know. So when you follow somebody, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, whatever the case might be, you tend to see everything that they have to talk about. Um, On Pinterest, I can really filter that. I can say, nope, I don't want to see when you pin stuff about that or find something interesting about that or you even write something about that if you have a blog. I want to see this other stuff and just that stuff because that's interesting, that's useful, that's informational or entertaining to me. Yeah, and and honestly, that's one of the things that I think – yeah, the other social networks are missing is that ability to, hey, I like you, but I just don't like everything that you like as well you know what i mean like somebody might say eric i want to see only the bacon stuff you post and nothing else uh the crispy bacon grilled cheese roll-ups that are oh yeah in front of me on pinterest oh my gosh Um, and that's the thing is like i can then follow only certain aspects of the p- that is sounds so impersonal or so negative and it does it does it 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 does it really it sounds self-centered, but this is a tool for me to use and we can still connect on that bacon board because uh-huh. I like bacon too. So we're still we still have that little bit of a social connection. Ooh, and apple just like cinnamon when, bacon bites. Oh, oh my gosh. Sorry. <laughs> I, I'm, okay, I'm now I'm really hungry. I am incentivizing people to check out Pinterest. <laughs> And tell, bacon will do it. Bacon you can tell what all my stuff is that I've followed. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm minimizing that. Um, but what were you saying? Yeah, I, I mean, but it's just like if we met in a social situation and we would be more than comfortable to talk about social media and what's going on in that world and, you know, what we're doing professionally and, you know, trends or, or whatever the case might be. But if you, let's say you, you meet, you know, maybe one of your, your kid's parents and they work in a completely different field and don't understand, you know, and really aren't into social media at all in the way that we are, you wouldn't have a conversation with them about social media, right? No. So it's okay. We don't, it doesn't mean that I don't, I will only follow your social media boards because that's our, our biggest common, you know, I think or thing in common, but it's just, it's just because I don't have an interest in something else doesn't mean I don't like you or I'm not feeling, you know, a connection, friendship or or whatever that case might be. So I think it, it works out well. You get to segment or categorize or organize is probably the better word, Mm -hmm. uh, your different interests and then you pin them to different boards and Mm -hmm. people can follow all your boards or just some of them. And that really helps in terms of 
the signal to noise ratio. Like I yeah. actually still have some work to do on this in terms of I follow I've followed people, but I need to unfollow some of their boards. And mm-hmm. I mean, for me, it's probably the best way to do it is, and maybe you have a better suggestion, but is to just kind of scroll down through my existing feed now and say, oh, this thing isn't interesting. Who pinned that? And what what board is it on? Oh, I can unfollow that board. That's not something that's I need ex- to see. Yeah, that's exactly the best way to do it. I was I was on Pinterest the other night, and um, uh, actually a high school friend of mine started pinning stuff about little mini travel campers, and they were adorable, but not anything I'm really interested in, in ever pinning to any of my own boards. Really don't want to see it. And she was pinning a lot. I guess she's doing research, so I just you know clicked on it. I can see exactly what board she pinned it to, and I just unfollowed that board. But I want to see all the other stuff she's up to, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely the the best way to do that. So it's almost as if this gives us the option, missing option that Facebook does not have. Whereas, oh, there's a friend of mine and I love them to death, but they post way too many pictures of their new baby. And (laughs) I don't need to see every single one of them, but I don't want to never see their pictures again. This allows me to, uh, you know, just, and and that's the thing is people aren't going to be posting a ton of pictures of their own, their new babies on Pinterest anyway for, for, I mean, some would, Mm -hmm. but it's less likely to happen in the broadcast mentality that that other social networks have than this does, right? That yeah, that's exactly true. It, it's it's not. Some people do share personal stuff on there, um, but that's not the norm. You know, most of it is just a place to to really. It's a visual bookmarking tool to go to the internet, find stuff you like, find things you're interested in, find things that are useful, and then bookmark it on Pinterest. And 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 you know, I used to bookmark mark stuff on my browser all the time, but to go back and find it, I would have to remember what I named it, what file I put it in, and it's a big long text list. And you know, I'm I'm not that very you know I, I tend to get you know in a hurry and I get unorganized and I forget to categorize things. And like, hey, okay, where where did I put that that bookmark about you know X Y Z? And I'd have to search through the list. Now on Pinterest, when I bookmark it, it makes it very easy to to just choose the board I want to put it to. I know it's on that board, or I can just even put in a couple of uh, search for it. I can search through my own pins, mm. and I kind of know what it's about and how I would describe it. So I just search my stuff, and I can find it really really quickly. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so Pinterest for digital organization sake or even mm-hmm. a digital representation of tangible uh analog stuff <laughs> it, 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 that's kind of, i mean you saw that right away you thought oh this is this is good i can get organized i can find cool things and organize them in a place that i can quickly and easily find them again boom i'm in Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a recipe I pinned when I first started on Pinterest back in 2011 that I still go back and reference because I know where it is. I know I want to make it and I know how to find it. And there it is. But I have cookbooks that have dust upon dust and layers and layers of dust on them because where in that book was it? Which book was it? I don't remember. Yeah, forget it. You know, yep. it's it's qu- it's the ability to quickly find something that you've already done the processing on. Exactly. And discovery for future cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. you know, and, and that's kind of how, how my blog started about Pinterest is about the stuff that I was doing and, and, you know, what people were trying on it and what I wanted it to do. And, and, you know, and, and that's where my tagline for my blog came from. It's like, don't just pin it, do it. It's yeah. Use these pins and all this stuff that you're finding along online and go do it. Go make that bacon recipe. What's it like? I mean, you know, kind of broaden your horizons. It was a very kind of motivational, positive place, you know, for me back then, you know, and it still is. Um, And and I I really enjoy that about it. It's that we have so much information at our fingertips. And I think, you know, Pinterest can help us find a way to organize and then implement all those things that, you know, we find that we're interested in. Okay. So let's talk about a couple of these preconceived, maybe possible notions that people have uh, especially the gender thing. Let's let's get that out of the way. Um, because I enjoy Pinterest. I don't do it as often as – I'm going to even say as often as I should, which is a weird thing to say about something. I should do Pinterest more. It's a weird <laughs> thing for someone to say. It's even weirder in – context of the stereotype that it's mostly women to have me say as a man. I guess. <laughs> but those yeah. cute puppies next to this bacon right here are pretty cool. Anyway. 
Um, yeah, you know, as far as a stereotype goes, it, it it just it's just the way it kind of grew up. Typically, and you know what I've found and through research and things, uh, when a new product or a new social network, especially, comes on the scene, it tends to be adopted either early on on the East Coast or on the West Coast of the United States. That's where it starts, and it's usually among men first, and then the women tend to be you know tend to join on, and then it spreads throughout the country, and there you go. Pinterest was different, which was really unusual because because it was started by a few guys. Um, but the early adopters happened to be women of the Midwest, women who were college educated with families. Um, so they were there first. So they have the biggest presence there first because they know other people like themselves. So they're inviting their friends and their friends find out about it. So that's why you see it be such a, a female skewed type of platform in the U.S. Um, internationally, it's a little bit different. In the U.K., for example, it's about 50-50 between men and women. Um, and, and the kind of the, the, the thought that I like to put into people's minds is, well, if we looked at Facebook when it first started, it was just college kids. You don't say that anymore. It's more than college kids trying to see, you know, what they're at and the social side of, you know, college and who's dating who and all that kind of stuff. That's not how people use it anymore. Um, so I, I wouldn't, I guess I would kind of discourage people from shying away. Oh, because mostly women use it if you happen to be a man, you know. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. And it, it, like I said, it's very, very personal. When you get on P- Pinterest to begin with, you might see a lot of, you know, more feminine type of topics, you know, showing up in the images. You might see some, you know, maybe some hair information, some wedding cakes and crafty projects to do. But you can quickly customize your Pinterest account to only show the stuff that you're interested in. So let, I guess let's talk about that then. If if somebody's willing to give it a try and say, because even for me right now, like I just again I, I did a quick scroll of you know five six seconds, and again I'm seeing a lot of stuff that isn't necessarily my you know oh that looks good. Anyway, <laughs> dang it, it's a layered Doritos casserole. <laughs> like a like a taco bake dish, which I love. So you pin that and you go make that for dinner one night, and you give your right. wife the night off, and everybody's happy. Yeah. So, but anyway, <laughs> the, but right next to, I mean, there's recipes, and there's you know, here's somebody's hair, something or other, and here's mm-hmm. and so for example, here's this one. It's a do-it-yourself beauty tricks. Well, I'm like, okay, I like this person whose board it is. But I've just opened in a secondary tab that do-it-yourself beauty tricks, and now I'm clicking unfollow, and I won't have to see any of those in this feed anymore. So exactly. again, like, like all of this is completely just a retread of what I said earlier, you have the ability to cater this to be exactly what you want it to be from only those you want it to be from, and then set up your own collective board setup. And yeah, and depending on when you started your account, Pinterest has kind of changed and altered the ways over the past couple of years of when you have a new account, who you follow automatically, what you're going to automatically see in your home feed. Because if you launch a Pinterest account, they don't want you to start off with a blank slate. They want to kind of start you off somewhere. Um, So they give you accounts or right now, I think the way they're processing it or, or starting it is they're asking you about what you're interested in. And they're automatically assigning people for you to follow. Not anybody you know, Probably not or or whatever. Or maybe it's somebody really famous and they'll have you follow them. Um, And for, you know, as as a social media marketing side of things, it's it's awesome if you get to be one of those featured accounts because then you end up with an account with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers. Um, But once you do that, then you can just go into your, your Pinterest account and you can click on the following number and you might have like five or six. They start you off with just a few. And then go through and unfollow those people. Um, if you start your account off with like a Twitter account, um, you know, and you, you start it off that way, it might automatically connect you with some of the people you follow on Twitter on Pinterest. So, yeah, you know, that could have happened to us, Eric, if, you know, we're connected on on Twitter and I start a new account with that Twitter email, that same email, um, it would notice that we, okay, yes, you've linked the Twitter account. These are the people you're following on Twitter. These are who's also on Pinterest. You know, the computer does its little magic behind the scenes and it automatically has us following each other. But then you still have those boards that I'm not interested in. So I might not see that right away, but then you start pinning heavily to, you know, another board that, isn't make any sense to me. Beauty tips, you know, maybe beard grooming tips. I really don't need that information. Um, so then I can, when I see it on my feed, then I choose to unfollow it. So it's, it's a little bit of maintenance in the beginning, but not much. 
So how much, I mean, we're not even going from the whole perspective of using this as a marketing tool, but using it, it as more of a, a consumer or a productivity tool, personal mm-hmm. productivity tool. How do you suggest people, once they sign up, they get automatically, you know, fed some stuff in their board, in their, sorry, in their, is it news feed or is it just, what's it I called? call it their home feed. Home feed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Creating boards. What would you suggest in terms of creating boards? And well, that I guess that is next because we've already t- you you just did explain. You know, you can start to curate the stuff you automatically get fed. But how do you start to find the good people to follow as well as create the right boards for you? Yeah. So let's let's go ahead and start off with the boards, I guess, question. And really what interests you? You can create it to be whatever you want it to be. So, you know, Eric, for you, you could have a a bacon board for breakfast, lunch and dinner and keep them completely separate and maybe then, you know, bacon desserts, you know, and be as narrowed down as you want it to be. Or it could just be food in general. So when you, you know, you're having a hard time figuring out what to make for dinner, go to that board. Uh, When you're having, you know, you want some inspiration for how to, you know, when you're you're writing your show notes for your podcast, have a board about writing and for maybe social media tools, you know. So really whatever is useful to you, the kind of useful information that you find online, then that way when you're out on the internet just doing whatever it is you do there every day um, and you find something useful, then you can then save it to your Pinterest account. Just click the pin it button. There's every single browser has a pin it button available if the website you're going to itself doesn't have one. And then it'll save a picture from that web page to your Pinterest account. So then that way, when you need to go back and reference that information, whether it's cooking or work related or whatever, you have a quick and easy uh, place to get that from, you know, on the more personal side of things, if you're planning a vacation, if you're planning a trip or getting into the holiday season here pretty soon, and there might be a lot of travel coming up for people, where are you going to go eat in the city that you're going to go visit? You know, I, I always get so frustrated when, you know, traveling with family and, you know, even my kids and my husband, we spend 30 minutes. Well, I don't know. Do you want to eat here? Do you want to eat there? I don't know. What do they? What does Yelp say? What does you know? Whatever TripAdvisor say? Go to those places ahead of time and scout out a few places. Pin them to your Pinterest account, and it's all there in that one trip kind of board. Um, so you have places to eat, things to visit, resources in that area, whatever the case might be. And that way, you know, you kind of have some uh, you know advanced plans, things set up, and an easy place to access it from, because you can then use the Pinterest mobile app to do that all there. Depending on how you pin it, you can also put a map. With it, you know, if it's a, a physical location, you can assign a map to it. So then you have directions on how to get to that place. So it's it can be really useful in that way too. Nice. Uh, let's see. There's there's a couple of other I, random ideas I'm thinking of here. Um, some of the stuff again, it's more of a you know artsy craft type bent to it. Mm-hmm. But I've still, you know, like here's, hey, it, here's one to organize your closets or mm-hmm. here's one to, um, you know, organize your, well, the underbed storage, different things like that. And it's like, those aren't my passion per se, but they are a little bit, they are, they, they fit under productivity in my mind because their organization and their time saving. And, you know, I mean, if there's any way to lay out or put things away in the home to where it's easier or better uh, better able to be mm-hmm. cleaned or whatever <laughs> put away you know what i mean like not because that's the thing is like it, it, again i'm i'm trying to avoid those gender stereotypes no, I, well i i think this, it really but, applies to any kind of project right. You know, whether I, I spoke with a, a business owner um, or actually they, they weren't a business owner. They were working in one of the, a big, big, big business um, and they were in restaurants and, they had, you know, kind of a big chain of restaurants. And they worked on the design team to go design the new franchises. And they had they, they worked together as a team to just kind of pin ideas of what they wanted to include in the upcoming you know locations that they were going to open. And so they use it as a team collaboration tool. So they, you're using it for that kind of planning project. You're doing a project around the home, you know, just like you you said, you know, maybe organization storage type of project around the house, a landscaping project, Um, pretty much any kind of project that you have coming up, you can then kind of ag collect um, resources of information to help you get through that project and and plan ahead for it. So it's a great planning tool. Yeah, it's a great it's a great place to uh, collaboratively all pin to one board, you could have multiple Mm -hmm. people pinning to one board, all the different ideas for certain projects, visual representation of possible ideas or things you want to, you know, be inspired by when you are creating 
whatever it is. It doesn't just have to be food. It can be, you know, or, or arts and crafts stuff. It can be visual representations of, of anything. And that's where it really shines is being able to just scroll through and see five, six, seven, and just your awe, your eye is drawn to a particular thing very quickly. And, and the, so you can find things as well as see what you like and don't like very quickly on here. Mm-hmm. I, I love that. So the other cool thing I think is the ability to, th- there's just this, this pouring out of this creativity or innovation that I also see when I scroll through is it, it, it's not, even if it's not in regards to what you're specifically working on to, you know, in other words, hacks is what I'm getting yeah. at. Is it really, <laughs> dis- it, it, it's hacks all over the board of all different varieties and interest groups in it, it's either somebody's doing something in a cool new way or doing something you never thought of mm-hmm. or doing something doing something old in a new way and you can start to i mean it, it can generate new ideas and new ways of thinking in term in terms of new things to do or new ways to do old things yeah, yeah. One of the reasons it's built and the way they're kind of trying to, to I guess, kind of promote Pinterest is, is a discovery and inspiration tool from all the images that you see from the type of information that you come across. Oh, you might discover, you know, I just found one recently about, you know, 25 things you didn't know your iPhone could do. Like, oh, I didn't know that, you know, and it just kind of happened to randomly show up. Pinterest is now starting to show what are called related pins. So if you have shown an interest clicking on or clicking through or pinning things about a particular topic, they are going to start to show you pins related to that topic from people that you don't follow yet. So then maybe you can follow, you know, find somebody else to follow with, you know, a great board full of information about the stuff you're looking for. Also, depending on your account settings, Pinterest will kind of do the little cookies thing and follow you online and see what you're searching for online and then start to show you that kind of stuff in your Pinterest account too. Okay. Uh-huh. So let's say, you know, so if you are searching a lot of bacon stuff and then your wife comes in and she starts to search for, I don't know, chocolate stuff, you might start seeing a lot more chocolate than you see bacon. And you maybe know, together so. too. So. And maybe together. You never know. But that is something you can either enable or disable if you do want them to do that, you know, or not. Um, you know, I know that's happened to me on YouTube and my daughter goes up and looks up, you know, all these crazy bands that she listens to. And I, I get all these suggestions of all this music I will never listen to voluntarily with her. I do it, you know, because we do what we do for our kids. But, uh, yeah, so, but you can turn it off. Just it's in your account settings. So I think some people would think, yeah, but why are you telling me to get, if, if they're not already started, why are you telling me to get started on what could potentially be a giant time wasting thing instead of a tool for my productivity? Oh, it can. It can. But I think most tools for productivity can almost be that way, too, because if you spend that much time within them, fine tuning them and and maybe tweaking them and getting them set up and blah, 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 it can end up being, you know, more time spent on that. Um, It's just really in the way that you approach it and the way you you want to use it. If you, you see the little sparkly thing off in the corner and you get distracted really easy maybe Pinterest isn't the best place for you to be because there's lots of great stuff to look at. Um, but if you want a place where you know that you can then, you know, kind of organize and, and get all the information that you're interested in that you might want to re- reference later or go back to or keep in mind for, you know, the future, um, I think Pinterest can be a really great tool. That's awesome. So what are some of the most unique ways maybe that you're using it or you've seen other people use it that really has just helped you out? Um. Let's see. I think some, you know, just some some things that come to mind right away is if you're planning an event, you know, and you planned an event and you use Pinterest and people want to know, hey, where did you get that kind of idea? Where did that recipe come from? Hey, check out my Pinterest board. It's all there. Um, Same thing like with Thanksgiving coming up. If I'm making this, then my sister's going to make that and my cousin's going to make this and we're all going to get together and we've decided it through Pinterest. Um, So through collaboration, you know, once again on projects, but it is, you know, it's it's a it's a celebration. It's a wedding. It's the, it's the Thanksgiving dinner, um, coming together and use it that way to plan something. And most recently, my husband and I used it for finding our new home in Charleston. Um, we got together on a group board with each other and then another one with us and our realtor. And we went to all the different real, real estate sites that we were looking at homes on and we pinned the homes that we were interested in. And in the description of the pin, what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it, things we sh- yeah, we should look at this. No, this is in the wrong neighborhood, but I like the style of house, you know. So we're able to communicate with our real estate agent and with each other what we liked and what we didn't like. That 
is a very unique <laughs> idea. <laughs> I didn't. I'm like, oh, okay. So who suggested that? Was it you or the realtor? It was me. <laughs> and so how did you sell the realtor on that? Um, I told her what I did. And if she wanted to work with us, this is the way I like to work with it. And she's like, okay, let's do that. It probably helped her out or them out. As a well, yeah, because then she, she, you know, I didn't have to send her email after email after email. Hey, look at this real estate site. I like this one, you know, or here's this link. I like this one. She could see it all in one place. She could kind of get to know us. These are the types of houses. This is the price range. This is the area. Oh, we're looking for something with more of a bigger backyard, smaller backyard, you know, whatever the case might be. And she had one place to go back and reference that. That's great. See mm-hmm. it. And it's, you organized it and it, it got the job done. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And, and I mean, it wasn't anything that we weren't going to do anyway. Even if Pinterest didn't exist, we would still have to go and look for the houses and, you know, we would go and look through all that stuff. But I think we to communicate with her would be a lot more difficult. We would have to send it by email, you know. Um, and even then, she was sending us listings from her, you know, MLS source and that type of thing that we, you know, maybe hadn't discovered yet or, you know, were new to the, the market. And so through that email, I could click to the site that it took us to. And then, yeah, oh, yeah, I like that one. So let's pin it, you know. And I told my husband, hey, I just pinned a house to our account. Go take a look at it. It has this, this, and this, you know. So he had an easy place to go get it from, you know, wherever he was at because, he, you know, he has Pinterest on his phone too. And so that, I guess for, for brevity's sake, you could easily just text him something too, couldn't you? And it would open the link to that in his app or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or or I guess Pinterest has messages now. Pinterest has messages now and he can get notifications that, Hey, he just got a message. Yep. Uh, See, there's just, so what's funny is, is, is suddenly I'm completely sold on Pinterest being this productivity tool more so than a social network because, again, I don't see it as something where you go in and you socialize. You're not yeah. really socializing. You're more kind of group curating and sharing cool stuff. It's not, hi, how are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> so, exactly. I mean, you can kind of turn it into yeah. that if you want. I've met some really great people through Pinterest. I've made a really good friend you know, that I you know, ran into on Pinterest months and months or years ago now, a couple of years ago now. And you know, it can happen. I, I, I met a woman who, whose, birth, whose son's birthday is Christmas Day. So she always felt like his birthday never got the celebration that she wanted it to have. So they decided to celebrate his half birthday. So every June they celebrate his birthday. And she didn't realize there was a whole community of half birthday celebrators. And she found them through Pinterest. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it can have a little bit of social component, but it's not the typical thing that you think of. the. And that's kind of why I was a little bit not into that, into social media, especially Facebook, before I found Pinterest, before I became a business owner, because it was a lot of gossipy kind of, oh, look at this and that. And, you know, my my best friend said this or people, you know, using Facebook as their diary. It's like, yeah, okay, (laughs) I don't need to see that every minute of every day. It was, you know, but I found a lot of usefulness and a lot of enjoyment out of Pinterest because it wasn't that drama stuff that sometimes you get on other social networks. Love it. So, I, yeah, I'm, I'm putting this on par as far as, uh, you know, an Evernote type of a tool. It can be, yeah. It really can be. I mean, you could turn Evernote into your own personal Pinterest if you wanted to, but you yeah. wouldn't be able to discover things in there. And that's, I think, exactly. cool about this. So. Yeah, you just you don't know what you're going to come across. If you, you started off planning a camping trip, for example, and, you know, you're starting to plan, okay, maybe food to prepare on a camping trip, you know, maybe, you know, little tips and hints about taking kids on camping or, you know, whatever you're looking for about camping. And then you notice something off about, you know, this big, beautiful sunset that somebody took a picture of on their camping trip and about photographing sunsets. Oh, well, hey, yeah, I want to take better pictures on my next camp camping trip. So then it spurs off into looking and learning more about photography that you hadn't really thought about. Yeah, you have this great camera, but you don't know how to use it. So you get a few tips about taking better pictures and it makes your camping experience even better. So you just don't know what you're going to come across. And for the fact that that may be a distraction, but you can throw it in the pl- in the right place for you to come back to later if you know you don't have time to do that right now. Exactly. I love it. Oh, man. Okay, so I'm sold, and I think everybody else needs to as well. Uh, There's so much more that you can do with Pinterest, and you talk all about it. Where can people find you online? Uh, The best place to find me is at ohsopinteresting.com. Thank you, Cynthia, for joining us. It's been my pleasure. Thanks, Eric. So, are you convinced? Is Pinterest a productivity tool or a social network? Or both? It still leans more towards productivity tool to me. 
productivity tool, discovery tool, interest, discovery, categorizing, organizing all your interests and cool things you want to do and try. It's almost a bucket list board, whatever. It's all these things and more and can be used like all other tools. I love Cynthia's point of there's productivity tools out there you can get lost in. This is one of them, but it can also be used for good. So let's use our powers for good. Thanks again to Cynthia for stopping by and talking to us about Pinterest. Make sure to go check her out and make sure to go check out the show notes for this episode at beyondthetodolist.com slash 83. Also, don't forget to check out the sponsor for this episode, MailChimp at beyondthetodolist.com slash MailChimp. Tell them I sent you. And if you like this episode and want to continue to listen to all the rest of the episodes and subscribe, go subscribe. Go to beyondthetodolist.com, subscribe, or go to iTunes. You'll find it there. Leave a review if you haven't before. Let me know how we're doing. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next episode. Beyond the To-Do List is a proud member of the Noodle Mix Network. Find more of our award-winning and award-nominated podcasts to make you think, laugh, and succeed at noodle.mx. Learn how to podcast, theorize over the TV shows Once Upon a Time, Once Upon a Time in Wonderland, and Under the Dome. Laugh with our clean comedy, delve into science fiction and philosophy, learn critical thinking from movie reviews, and more at noodle.mx.